Chapter 2 Chimney Venting Chimney venting was required for early oil heat equipment to remove the flue gases from the building and to draw in combustion air. It is still the most common type of venting for oil heat systems in use today. Chimneys can be lined or unlined. A lined chimney is typically made of brick and mortar on the outside with an inside liner of clay or stainless steel. The liner protects the chimney walls from temperature variations and corrosion. An unlined chimney provides no means of protection for the chimney walls. They're not permitted under current NFPA regulations and they are not recommended for oil heat systems. Here's how chimney venting works. Since hot combustion gases weigh less than room air or outdoor air, they tend to rise. During the combustion process, heated gases expand and rise through the heating appliance to the flue pipe. They then travel up the chimney, creating negative pressure or suction, also known as negative draft, before being released to the outside atmosphere. All venting systems rely on draft. Draft is a pressure difference that causes gases or air to flow through a chimney, vent, flue, or appliance. In practical terms, draft is a force that pulls or sucks the exhaust gases out of the heating appliance, up the chimney, and out of the building. And there are two types of draft that affect the operation of standard chimney venting systems. Thermal draft, sometimes called natural draft, and torrential draft. Thermal draft is produced by the difference in weight of a column of flue gases within a chimney or a vent system and a corresponding column of air of equal dimension outside the chimney or venting system. Torrential draft occurs when wind passing across the top of a chimney creates suction and draws gases and or air up. Torrential draft can also cause downdrafts and push air down the chimney. Three main factors control the amount of chimney draft that is generated. The chimney height, the higher the chimney, the greater the draft. The temperature of the combustion gases, the hotter they are, the greater the draft. And the temperature of the air outside the building. The colder it is outside, the greater the draft. How much draft does an appliance need? Is a fairly common question, and the answer is it varies. Oil heat equipment manufacturers specify the amount of draft required in two places. The first is at the breach, which is in a straight piece of flue pipe on the appliance side of and at least six inches from the draft regulator. The second is over the fire in the flame observation door just above the combustion chamber. Over fire draft is normally about negative 0.02 inches of water column. Normally is emphasized here because the manufacturer's guidelines must be followed and there are some oil fired appliances that require positive over the fire draft. Manufacturers also specify what the draft drop through the appliance should be. Draft drop is the difference between the draft over the fire and the draft at the breach. If there are negative 0.04 inches of draft at the breach and negative 0.2 inches over the fire, the draft drop is negative 0.02 inches of water column. As with all settings for oil heat appliances, the manufacturer's instructions must be followed. Notice that even though this chart refers to a certain boiler model, the draft drop is not the same for all boiler sizes. Be sure to adjust each appliance to the manufacturer's specifications. This next section covers barometric draft controls, also known as draft regulators. Oil heat systems require a steady draft. Once the appliance reaches steady state efficiency, the draft over the fire must remain constant to allow for proper combustion and efficiency. Since natural draft varies depending on several factors, including atmospheric pressure, temperature, and wind, barometric draft controls are needed to stabilize draft for most oil fired appliances. Barometric draft controls lower draft by allowing room air to mix with the combustion gases as they rise through the flue pipe. 
They also help dry moisture from the chimney during the burners off cycle. NFPA 31 defines the draft regulator as a device that functions to maintain draft through an appliance to a desired value by admitting ambient air to the appliance chimney, chimney vent, or vent connector. The 2020 version of NFPA 31 reads as follows. A draft regulator shall be provided for each oil burning appliance that is connected to a chimney or power venting system unless the appliance design, conditions of installation, or combinations thereof preclude excessive chimney draft or the appliance itself is listed for use without one. The reason NFPA mentions unless the appliance is listed for use without one is that some oil heat appliances are designed to operate without a draft regulator. Their burners create enough static pressure to move the combustion products up the chimney and the heat exchangers are designed to resist the effects of strong and variable draft. There are three main requirements regarding draft controls. First, they must be installed in the proper location. In the diagram, locations marked with A are acceptable and locations marked with B are not. Second, they must be horizontally level across the pivot points and vertically plumb. Third, if the control has specific weight locations for vertical and horizontal installations, the weight must be in the proper location to operate properly. In this picture, the weight is installed in the correct location for a vertical flue. This diagram helps an installer or technician determine if a location is considered horizontal or vertical. The H's are horizontal positioning and the V's are vertical. When several appliances are vented into a common chimney connector, each should have its own draft control located in position A, the uptake between the appliance and the main breach. If the uptake is too short to allow the installation, locate the control in location B, the main breach. If neither location is possible, install a single large control in location C between the chimney and the nearest appliance. Extremely tall chimneys may require that multiple draft controls be installed to enable proper draft. In these situations, one control should be installed at location C, and individual controls should be installed at either A or B locations. The control at C balances the chimney, and the ones at A or B balance draft for the individual appliances. This illustration shows the operation of a draft control. The static pressure of cool air exerts pressure on the outside of the appliance, the breaching, and the flue pipe. The pressure difference between room air and combustion gases causes the gases to flow through the appliance and rise up through the flue and the chimney. Room temperature air enters through the draft regulator in the precise amount needed to overcome the excess draft caused by temperature variations, wind fluctuations, and barometric pressure changes. The end result is that the velocity of combustion gases through the heat exchanger is slowed, so more heat is extracted. The unit operates more efficiently, more reliably, and requires less maintenance. For most applications, appliance manufacturers recommend that the draft control should be the same size as the flue pipe. Tall chimneys often require larger controls to prevent overdrafting. For example, an appliance with a six inch flue pipe typically requires a six inch control if the chimney is 15 feet high or less. However, a seven inch control is recommended if the chimney is 16 feet or higher. During high draft conditions, a smaller control may not be able to completely manage the excessive draft load. Sometimes the venting system cannot develop sufficient draft to safely vent the combustion gases from the building. Downdrafts due to outside influences, short chimneys, terrain, outside exposed chimneys, 
Undersized venting systems, long horizontal vent runs, and negative building pressure can cause draft problems. When the venting system can't develop sufficient draft, a draft inducer, also known as a draft fan, can be installed to provide the necessary draft. The draft fan should be installed as close to the chimney as practical and must be electrically interlocked with the appliance utilizing a proving circuit before combustion takes place. NFPA 31 requires a draft fan when the horizontal length of the chimney connector is longer than 10 feet. This illustration shows how a draft inducer installed with a control kit provides the necessary draft when needed. On a call for heat, the control kit energizes the draft inducer. The draft inducer then forces airflow in the chimney, creating negative pressure in the flue pipe, heat exchanger, and combustion chamber. Once negative pressure is established, the control kit allows the burner to start. When the call for heat is satisfied, the control kit shuts down the burner. The draft inducer then shuts down after a post-purge cycle. Flue pipe sizing is determined by the appliance manufacturer. This manufacturer chart shows the minimum flue pipe size ranges from 5 to 7 inches, depending on the model of the appliance. There are a number of regulations in NFPA 31 regarding the connection between the appliance and the chimney. Technicians should refer to the current edition of the standard and the local authority having jurisdiction for the most up-to-date requirements. The 2020 version of NFPA 31 requires the following for natural draft appliances. The flue pipe must be at least 18 inches from a combustible wall or ceiling. The flue pipe must maintain a pitch or rise of at least one quarter inch per foot of horizontal length of pipe from the appliance to the chimney. The horizontal length of pipe must not exceed 10 feet unless a draft fan is used and each joint of the flue pipe shall be fastened with at least three screws. Additionally, the flue pipe must not be longer than 75% of the portion of the chimney above the chimney inlet. For example, if the chimney extends 20 feet above where the flue pipe connects, the flue pipe can be no longer than 15 feet. In masonry chimneys, the flue pipe must extend through the chimney wall to the inner face or liner, but not beyond, and shall be firmly cemented in place. And the flue gas exit of the chimney must be at least three feet above the highest point where it passes through the roof, and at least two feet higher than any portion of a building within 10 feet of the chimney. This section will address blocked vent safety switches. Venting systems can malfunction or become blocked. Animals sometimes enter the system. Soot can accumulate. Chimney liners can deteriorate, etc. When the vent system malfunctions, flue gases, including carbon monoxide, can enter the building. Thermal safety switches detect a temperature rise above a set point caused by a blocked vent, which indicates inadequate draft. These manual devices lock out when they sense a temperature above 200 degrees Fahrenheit. They are mounted as close to the appliance breach as possible and wired in series with the primary control to prevent burner operation when there is a blocked vent. In this illustration, flue gases flow from right to left and draft is sufficient to pull air through openings in the switch housing assembly, keeping the sensor at ambient room temperature. In this illustration, flue gases are not flowing through to the chimney and are pushing up against the sensor. In this situation, the sensor will overheat and power to the burner will be shut off. Let's discuss chimney venting today. Over the years, there have been many improvements relating to the efficiency of homes and oil heating equipment installed in them. Homes have been made tighter by adding insulation and caulking around windows and doors. These energy saving improvements reduce the heat loss of buildings and allow smaller oil heat appliances to be installed. Today, boils and furnaces are much more efficient than those that were available 40 years ago. Common flue gas temperatures used to be in the 650 to 700 degree range and typical firing rates ranged from 1.25 to 1.5 gallons per hour. 
Today's high efficiency oil fired heating systems have a gross stack temperature that typically range from 300 to 500 degrees with an average firing rate of 0.75 to 0.85 gallons per hour. All of these improvements have led to problems with chimneys that had functioned properly with older, less efficient oil heat equipment. Exhaust temperatures decrease as efficiency increases, and chimney draft decreases as the flue gas temperatures drop. In addition, flue gas temperatures at the top of the chimney decrease as the gross stack temperature drops. Installing higher efficiency heating equipment in larger and or older chimneys increases the possibility of flue gas condensation and related chimney concerns. There are a number of telltale signs that indicate a chimney is in need of repair or relining. NORA recommends that service technicians begin troubleshooting before they enter a customer's home or business. As a technician approaches a job site, he or she should look at the chimney for any indications of a problem. Once inside the structure, the inspection should continue. Among the more common indications that a chimney needs a repair or relining are leaning. This chimney is clearly in need of major repair. The appliance that is venting into this chimney should be shut down until a repair or replacement is completed. Crown damage. Crown damage due to freeze-thaw cycling is one of the most common chimney problems seen. The outdoor chimney crown is a good indicator of overall chimney condition. Loose bricks and or mortar. This indicates condensate damage to the masonry chimney. In such cases, relining is necessary to prevent further damage to the vent system. White powder, also referred to as efflorescence, on exterior brick surfaces indicates that salt deposits are being driven from the chimney's brick due to flue gas condensate. Moisture on the exterior walls of the chimney and efflorescence at the roof line indicate damage due to condensation. Moisture or stains on interior walls near the chimney. In this picture, plaster fell off interior walls due to condensate. This picture of a clean outdoor appears to indicate that something is happening in the chimney. Further investigation will help identify if it's condensation or if the chimney needs to have a cap installed. Debris in the clean out. Mortar, tile liner, and flakes are clear indicators that the chimney needs repairing or relining. Misaligned terracotta tiles at the joint. In addition to misalignment, this picture shows a line with missing, broken, cracked, or flaking tiles. Visual evidence of damage. This severe damage includes missing, broken, cracked, and separated tiles, all warranting shutting down the system. No liner installed. Oil heat systems should not be connected to a chimney without a liner. This next section covers steps to take when installing a new oil heat system into a chimney. NORA recommends that chimney cleanings and inspections be performed before a new high efficiency oil heat appliance is installed to replace an older unit. The inspection should include the following. If there is a clean out door, make sure that it is shut tight and sealed. Observe the exterior of the chimney. If it is damaged, deteriorating, or leaning to one side, further inspection by a chimney professional should be recommended. Remove the flue pipe from the chimney breach and inspect the inside of the chimney with a light and a flame mirror for signs of damage or deterioration. Even if the chimney inspection shows that there are no problems, remember that the gross flue gas temperatures for high efficiency systems range from about 300 degrees Fahrenheit to 500 degrees Fahrenheit at the outlet of the unit. These temperatures are reduced before reaching the chimney because of heat loss in the flue pipe and dilution air from the draft regulator. The resulting flue gas temperatures are usually insufficient to sustain adequate draft in an older, oversized masonry chimney, and they allow condensate to form in the chimney. In some situations, a metal chimney liner might be needed to increase draft and reduce condensation during burner operation, especially with larger chimneys. Annex E of NFPA 31 provides guidance for the relining of masonry chimneys. 
Venting tables are included that contain recommended sizes for metal liners based on the firing rates of the installed appliance. This table is provided for units with an 84% steady state efficiency. As an example, the firing rate of an appliance connected to a chimney that is 15 feet high and has a 10 foot lateral run of flue pipe can be fired between 0.65 and 1.5 gallons per hour. Additional tables for other steady state efficiencies are published in NFPA 31. 